it's like such a simple breakdown yeah. at certain points, you know, yeah. just the, it's just the drums. Just it the seemed like back. people, the audience, like my fans and just the audience itself, when they're listening to beats and music, that they like, they like it simple. Right. They don't like it too much in the beat. They don't right. understand it after they hear all this melodicness all in one beat. Right. If you just give them something simple, a drum and a nice little horn sound right. or and something. Cause, yeah, because the horns still kind of carry the melody. Yeah. You still hear the key and it's yeah. like, but at yeah. the same time it breaks down so stripped yeah. and so raw, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I wanted to keep everything that I took from the record and just beef it up. That's sweet. So yeah. it was one record. One record. Silver's record. Like, short and to the point is much better, you know, because people, when, when, when it's already over, they want to hear it again. You sampled uh, Stay Away From Me. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember like where you picked that record up? or had you been I had that record like, ever since I was a kid. Okay. I, I had a Fisher Price uh, record player. Yeah. <laughs> and I bought that record for 75 cents and I put it on, uh, you know, I used to walk with it and play as I'm walking in the street. I used to play that record all the time. And then, um, you know, I realized as I got older that he was, the, the people that pro produced it was Jerry Butler and a couple other people. Right. You know, and it was the Silvers and everything like that. Right. So you, it was, it had been like a, you had almost been wanting to sample it for a while, yeah, but you yeah, almost yeah. didn't know it, yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I always liked the song and then, you know what, I, I just said, let me listen back to some of the stuff I used to like. Right. And then, you know, one of them was that. And then I had that on the beat CD when I went to see Ghost, and he liked that one. He picked that one. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about this. Okay. We'll give a we'll give a round of applause for that. Fun. Rest in peace to the B.I.G. Definitely, definitely. Greatest rapper of all time. Word. Um, that happened. Okay. Yeah, there's. A also, like you know, Puffy grew up in my neighborhood. You know, we all know each other, so forth. And, um, you know, when Puff started doing the bad boy thing, being uh, successful, you know, A&R at Uptown Records, then was able to form Bad Boy, he brought big to me. And um, I think I was one of the first producers he brought to, you know, that Puff. So <clears throat> um, I was making this, this, and I had this in Toomey record, you know, Juicy Fruit, and I was, I was making the beat because I knew they were coming, but I didn't know that he would like that beat. Then when I, when he got there, he was like, yo, who's that for? That's that's for you and CL? And I was like, nah, I was just, I didn't even get a chance to play him nothing else. Like, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, the drums were playing, he was feeling it, came down there bopping and saying, yo, I like this right here. And then I started messing with the record and putting the, what I wanted to do and, and started rubbing it against the drums. And, and it was like, yeah, that's it, yo make that happen and then you know that was like you know my first intuition went big like my hope my first uh you know uh my first time him being around me me being around him and um yeah and then he asked me he was like yo he was like yo let me let me see how you do it let me let me just see how you make a beat and i was like all right yeah. i was like all right so at the time i had these records scattered around I, I just noticed the George Benson record and I was you know cut I was making like DJ tapes and I had this EPMD you a customer record so I took I took the drums from that and I took the George Benson record and put that together and it's a song called in the flesh on the main ingredient album I, I made that beat in front of big he was right there when I did that like the whole beat from everything you hear and then and he was after it was done he was just like wow that's how you do it like he was bugging out like he couldn't believe it like he, he didn't think that i made the beats with my own two hands until he seen it for himself you know what i mean and the last words he spoke to me was um yo that's what you and large professor on the on that on that high school high he loved that that was the last thing he ever said to me Word. That was that was big. You know what I mean?
shop the record, like each piece like that. Boom, boom, boom. How I do it is, you know, like I sometimes I'll start out with the beat first, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll um, have someone come in, spit on it, like, you know, on some vocals or whatever. And then I arrange the, the, the music around what he, uh, what he or she is saying and um, make it more exciting. When I do the beat, I can speed it up. Still play the same. And the record is much slower. You know what I mean? And that's basically it. Hey, your name is the position you're trying to ask for. Mary Ann Parker, pitcher. Uh -huh. Wait. The song um, at my disposal, I, I listen to it and it's like wherever I, I hear it sounds the best part in the record, I'll take it. You know, and I'll, you know, if I'm really feeling it, I'll really chop it into little, 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 little pieces. You know what I'm saying? So I could do what I want with it, you know? And um, that's that's how I do my music. And basically, you know, it's an advantage for me because I can, you know, with the sample, no matter what tempo it is, I can speed it up, slow it down without doing it here. I can do, you know, use the actual beats per minute. But there's several ways to, to do it. I have, that's just one method, you know what I'm saying? Where my mind is sometimes is, is a little out there, you know? I like to be that way when I'm making music, you know what I'm saying? And um, I just go to another place where, where people, other people don't go. Like, say for instance, they have these now that do um, stretching, you know what I'm saying? But I do it the manual way. But it's easier to do it manually with this drum machine than with the SP, you know what I'm saying? This is just such a comfortable drum machine. I can sit here all day and chop up record and not be tired, you know what I'm saying? And just, oh wow, you know, the soft pads and everything. How me and Nas came about to do The World Is Yours was we basically mapped it out in my basement, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, came up with the ideas and we went through a couple of beats before we found that one. And um, when he hears the beats he likes, he starts to bop. Um, he's very quiet and then he's, you know, doing this, so, which means either he's thinking of an idea or, you know, he's onto it like he likes the beat. And then the ideas came and <clears throat> he wanted me to sing the hook to The World Is Yours. And, uh, don't ask me how I did it, but it, 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 it worked out, you know. I'm glad it did. I'm glad that it worked out for him. It was most important that he liked it more than anything. My reaction when I heard the final song, I was blown away, you know what I mean? Because um, there's a few heads in the, in the session when I was mixing it down in uh, Battery Studios. And uh, in Battery Studios, it's the same building where Jive Zamba used to be. So, you know, you had DJ Premier in the room when I'm doing scratches on it. And you had Large Professor in the room and a few other people there. Um, and it was like just creating magic in the mix, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, did a one take, did one take with the scratches. And, you know, Nas is an easy person to work with because you're never really worried about what he's going to say, you know what I'm saying, you just, you know, want to make sure that he's satisfied with, with, with what he's getting, and he likes it, and so forth, so, well, but that was a, 
one of the key moments I remember besides being in my basement was mixing the song in the studio. And I take kicks and snares from records. I don't I don't usually use library stuff, you know. For me, you, you can't find certain snares in the library. You know, some things you just hear on the record, you're like, whoa. I'll take a bar, uh, a drum loop that's two bars, even a half, of, not even. Uh, I'll take something that's a quarter of a bar, like like a kick and a snare that goes boom, back. But there's, there's enough air between it. It sounds like it's just played together. And, that, and that's how I do it. I, like, I'll have a, a slew of drums, and then I'll have a slew of samples. And then I'll just put them all together and see what sounds best with what. Hi hat, a kick, kick from a record. Another kick where it's like right before the big kick. You know how? Wait. You know what I mean? Right. I was, it was funny because I got like three or four different loop drums going at the same time. But one is really low, and then you have um, substitution in there. Like there's a, it's the name of a break beat. Okay. And it's the same beat that Ultra Magnetic used for ego tripping. Yeah, okay. And I just got it chopped up and going with another Lee Dorsey record, and then um, a kick and a snare okay. of my own. Yeah. Okay, is it just a single snare? Because I know sometimes you've like doubled snares. You know the group Mountain, the rock group yeah. Mountain? Yeah, of course. The, 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 that, that, yeah. That's Mountain. <laughs> and it's sweet. called Long Red, the song I'm yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. I took that and chopped it in there with the beat. That's sweet. And that's what really brought the drums across the top when I put that Mountain record in there. That know? just put them, yeah, yeah, right? That just made it like, bah! And I was like, wow, this sounds really... Little boom back, right? Yeah, like sounds like, you know? And I liked, always liked the live crowd sound in that mountain record. So yeah. I wanted it to be live, you know? So, <laughs> and then the bass line came, and then everything else started sprinkling, you know? Snare, kick, uh, hand clap, and this is the guitar. I just took that and built a bass line behind it. Love is a battle Yeah, I took it because I had a bass in there. And it, you know. And then, and then I can still play. Sounds like a record. 